hey, buddy. How you doing? Happy Thursday. I hope you are fabulous. Today, we have the second part of the interview with my client and friend, Arielle Ilunga, which, P.S., I just texted her because I'm taking, casually taking these Italian classes. Mm, That's not even accurate. I'm like casually learning Italian from a British guy on Audible in my car. And we just did the alphabet. And Ilunga is how you say the letter J in Italian. So... You're about to get so much juicy value from this upcoming episode, but you already learned something today. So (laughs) you're welcome. I texted her that and she was like, mind blown. I had no idea. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. So anyway, this is the second part of the conversation we started last week. And if you haven't listened to last week's episode, episode 18, you have to because it's just, Arielle is so real and honest and she is doing big, scary things in the world, but she is a normal human, just like every other human, (laughs) spoiler alert. But it's so easy to think, oh, big leaps are unavailable to me because blah, 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 right? I'm too old. It's too late. I jump at the chance to share anyone's story who makes it look more possible to do big, scary things. So that's what last week's episode was all about. Her being super honest about, yeah, I'm never not scared, but you can live with fear which is different than living in fear. Ugh, so good. I just came up with that on the spot too, but that's essentially what that episode boiled down to. And in this week's episode today, we are sharing the coaching portion of our conversation because she said she had some cobwebs that she wanted to investigate. And I was like, ooh, cool, let's clean up some cobwebs. So this is a fun insider look for you at how does a coaching conversation really go in real life with real humans? You're gonna see Arielle talk through her thoughts, what has been coming up, How has that been making her feel? And you'll see me asking her a bunch of questions. And this is what we do in coaching. We give you an opportunity to experience your thoughts and feelings honestly, instead of judging them, rushing out of them, avoiding them, thinking you don't have time for them, all the things. And we give you the opportunity to engage with your thoughts and feelings intentionally. Now that I know how I'm thinking and feeling, how do I want to think? How do I want to feel? Very cool. So much fun. So I hope you have fun because we go into these cobwebs that Ariel is sharing about what is happening in her brain as she is looking ahead at this amazing life she is creating for herself. So I hope you have the best time hanging out with us. And just to contextualize, if you didn't hear the last episode, Ariel is the founder and CEO of Carla's Fresh Market, where you can do online shopping right now at carlasfreshmarket.com. You can order elevated pantry staples for yourself, like I do all the time. And you can order these beautiful curated boxes also for yourself, but also make great gifts. So go check them out and enjoy our conversation. Do you want to talk about the cobwebs? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Here's everything. The, okay. Here's the cobweb. It's a creepy feeling that's been coming up in the last, like, maybe week or two. And I don't know that I know what to do with it. I've acknowledged, I'm acknowledging the feeling and the, and the thought, and that's all I got so far. So basically, Great, yeah, we're at the precipice. And the, uh, the dream is like unfolding before my very eyes. Like I am getting much closer to the store and it's all unfolding and I can like watch it. I'm like, well, I feel it's weird. Cause I feel like I'm watching it unfold now as opposed to like actively pushing things around and make it happen. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm watching it unfold, which is like both really settling and gratifying and grounding, but also like trippy at the same time and like weird and scary. Um, and so I just, I like, I visualize, I visualize a lot and I visualize myself in this space and being open. I visualize myself at the opening party. Like I'm, I planned this like kick-ass party and, and I'm like, okay, so we don't know when and when doesn't matter, but there's going to be this window where I have everything I want. I have everything I want. I have my family. I have this amazing partner. I have these like beautiful children. We're in our home that we bought. 
a year or two ago. Never thought that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I have my store and it's like filled with beautiful fruits and vegetables and people are happy and they love shopping there and they're satisfied and they're meeting their neighbors for the first time. And I'm like standing there and I have all of it. I have everything, everything I could possibly want right now. And I'm like, oh my God, something bad is going to happen to balance the scales because you just Mm -hmm. can't be happy for too long. And then then I'm having all these fearful thoughts of like, what, you know, something terrible is going to happen to my husband. Something terrible is going to happen to one of my kids, you know, and just that thinking awfulness of like something terrible has got to happen, balance scales. Mm -hmm. You really can't be happy for very long. Isn't that awful? So then I think, is that, is that my like upper limit, upper, what is the book you made? Yeah. Upper limiting. Yeah. From Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap. Yeah. I'm like, is that, that talking? And, and so, but if, but it feels there's like a darkness because it, because, you know, thinking about something terrible happening to your husband or to your children, like feels awful or yourself or something, you know? Yeah. And so there's just the darkness that comes with that feeling. And so it doesn't make me feel good. And then I'm questioning, like, why am I even having this thought? You know, it's hard. So that one's a tough one. Yeah. And it's so, so human. That's why, ev- like, Gay Hendricks calls it upper limiting. Brene Brown calls it dress rehearsing tragedy. Mm. It's so human. And it's like the vulnerability of letting yourself care. Because once you care about something, you have something to lose. Mm. So should and I not care? Do not. <laughs> right? Solution our- oriented over here. So what are you telling me? How do we solve it? it? Yeah. <laughs> according to that voice, like according to loss aversion, which is one of your cognitive biases. Yes. The solution is absolutely don't care about anything. Then you will have nothing to lose. Probably not the best feeling solution. No, uh, not practical either. I need more right? attainable solution. Yeah. <laughs> like something more down here. But it is so to to contextualize upper limiting because that could be a lot of what's happening here. There's an idea that Gay Hendricks goes into in his book The Big Leap, which is kind of a book about like four different things. It's a really I recommend it to a lot of people, but for like <laughs> it kind of different things. It kind of shifts gears a lot. So one of the concepts he shares is humans upper limit ourselves. And we, we put us a cap on how much love, happiness, success, abundance, we are capable of surviving. So once some, and they're all like, I imagine like tubes filling up and once like one gets a little full over here. We're like, well, surely this one's like bottom's going to drop out of this one. We're like, this one's going to spring a leak. Mm -hmm. And we can even get so uncomfortable with our own happiness and success and love that we start sabotaging things. We start poking holes in the tubes because we're like, uh, the shoe's not dropping fast enough. Like I gotta, I gotta start a fight over here or I gotta get sick or I gotta like, I gotta go on a impulse shopping spree to like get myself back down right to the ground level where everything is like a mix of going well and crappy. (laughs) Yes. But that's an interesting challenge to take on, right? This challenge of seeing, all right, how much love and happiness and abundance and success do I think I actually can be capable of allowing myself to experience? Like, what if you could have everything you wanted? I'm 100% on this ride to it. I think it's interesting that I'm having the thought now when I don't even quite have it all yet. But I thought one solution could be, (laughs) I thought this could be the solution to it all. You tell me if this is wacky get another dream like don't yeah. stop making plans or having goals have every 
I think I was like, then I'll just have a, like a plan, like another, like I'll just tack on another goal or dream or decision or something big right after it to keep, just to propel past. Potentially. Like okay. let's never stop dreaming. Let's, let's agree that we're never going to stop having dreams because okay, that's great. fun. But there is this paradox of dissatisfaction where we, we aren't happy because we don't have what we want, but once we get what we want, we no longer have that to strive for. Mm. So we're never happy. And that's, that's the moment of having that we want to invite you to like sit in for a second. Like maybe my question isn't what if you could have everything you want, but what if you could handle having everything you want? Like, what if you could have such a wide window of tolerance for human emotion? Like you could stretch all the way out to this end where joy and gratitude and like ecstasy, like what if you could handle feeling all of those emotions and you didn't have to escape from them quickly and like rush off to your next to-do list? That sounds beautiful. You're inviting me to stretch my heart and stretch my imagination. A yeah. I want you to watch Rick Hansen's Ted talk on savoring. It's actually called hardwiring happiness, but he teaches the skill of savoring, which is really like allowing it's instructing your brain not to rush out of a moment of happiness and just stay you, in it. You let, and it's like all the senses, right? You you're, you're good at tuning into your senses. We'd already talked about fear yeah. and this is like happiness. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and it's instructing your brain to take in what is happening and to mentally note, yeah, this is so good. And then to let you feel that, like you can let yourself feel that in your body. That's something to work on. Well, I want you to know you're already good at this. Okay. Because you've already exercise this skill with fear. You've already yeah. retrained your nervous system and your default habit thoughts about like, what do we do with fear? So you're already good at it. You can do the exact same thing with like happiness and joy and success. And yeah. Abundance. yeah. You, can, you can train your nervous system. Like it's okay not to rush out of this. Okay. It's okay to savor it. Okay. And I guess it's the same where you just, it uses the same muscles and tools. How with fear, I know it's there and I can work with it. it have to, it's the same thing with happiness. Is that what you're saying? Like yeah. I know it's there and I have access to it. I guess it's, it's different, right? Because we're so, I'm so programmed to think that there's a ceiling to happiness. Yeah. What if there is no upper limit? What if you can experience limitless love and success and joy and abundance? What if there's not too much? Sounds like a dream. Yeah. Honestly, a little bit, right? Yeah, because we're conditioned to like, well, you need to be responsible and like, don't take your eye off the ball and like, don't be caught off guard when something bad inevitably happens. But if something bad is inevitably going to happen, then like, great, we'll get to it. Yeah. We savor this moment while I'm in it. Yeah. But let's not miss out on this moment trying to prepare for the next catastrophe. Yeah. Yeah. But it is so human. There's some voice around the table that's like, it's going to be dangerous to pay too much attention to this good feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we can question that. Mm hmm we can question what, what's, what's dangerous. What it, about it? It's interesting to ask, like, what will it cost me to let myself enjoy this moment? Like nothing. Like I, it costs me nothing. I gain everything. Mm. Yeah. These are great questions. You're so good at this. See everybody. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited, but it's like, it's so important for you to know you already can do it because you've okay. already done it with fear. And then where, where does all my unlimited happiness and joy, like, how does that play with my fear? How do they, how do, do they hang out? I don't, what do you think? I don't know. Yes, obviously. But like, do they? 
that goes back to the vulnerability that we're like, how, how, what are you willing to sign up for? Right. If you're going to care about anything, if you're going to allow yourself to become invested in wanting something enough to commit to it enough to like, let yourself feel the joyful anticipation of creating it in the world, then it's like, great, you're giving yourself something to lose. And like, if we're on board with that, if we come back to your resilience and your resourcefulness, mm -hmm. like, do I trust myself to be able to solve that problem and survive that? I'm going to mm -hmm. ask those same questions about happiness. And do I think I can handle being this happy? Am I willing to try? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's deciding to show up for the whole life. And like, yeah, and not believing your brain's full. lie, right? That the movie ends at the 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 happy ending or the tragedy, right? Right. Like, yeah, you'll you'll have moments of joy, you'll have moments of fear, sometimes yeah. at the same time. Yeah, it's all it's the not knowing what's on the other side of the of having everything you want. Yeah the uncertainty of not knowing what's over there is like also really scary. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. hundred percent makes sense. And that's, that's where you get to remind yourself like the movie doesn't end right at the happy ending or at the next surprise, right? The next challenge. You get to be honest with yourself. Like, would, would I really want to stay in that moment forever and not experience any new growth, any new, any, any new challenges? Right. Yeah. Probably not. That would probably be boring. Yeah. It's just like a perpetual state of like ecstasy. Yeah. I will say this, that there is, it does right now feel powerful to not be afraid of your fear. Yeah. To like move through something and not be afraid of what's on the other side as it pertains to fear or challenge. Yeah. I don't know how to do the other side of that. I don't yeah. know how to do, I don't know where my power is with my happiness and my joy and how to get comfortable with that. That sounds like your next vision though, right? If you've already become the person who's not afraid of fear, which is yeah. freaking beautiful, then it's like, great. I need mean, to temper that. I, you know, like I see, it's like if the people, like right now I'm doing good. Yeah. Right now. I'm yeah, doing we're not good. painting, we're not painting any unrealistic pictures here, but okay, you're, good. you're not making, you're not living your life in avoidance of fear. No, no. You're not I'm making like your decisions charging. based on. What's yeah. the least scary option? No, I'm charging head first into like, you know, like yeah. I'm just making decisions on like what I want and what I feel called to do and fears along for the ride. And you, yeah, fear is in your plan of like, I'm going to get scared about stuff all yeah. of the time. Yeah. And that's, we're just, we're, that's part of the, the game plan. Yeah. So that's what we're saying. We're not selling magic beans. Okay, good. But that is a very different state than you several years ago. Yeah, totally. Where it's just like, don't I can't like... because I can't. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, because I, I have 18 reasons. Yeah. All the reasons. Yeah. And now the next person, like the next evolution of you, it sounds like is becoming the person who is not afraid of the joy. Okay. Just like you're not afraid of the fear in the way that you're not afraid of it. Right. Yeah. This is a huge challenge because that's like an I, interesting self-concept. Really? Yeah. Like to be the person, I mean, I think it's juicy and freaking fabulous Okay. to want to imagine yourself like you on in the, as a real person down the timeline. Yeah. Just a few months down the timeline. Yeah. Experiencing everything you want. Yeah. And knowing I am capable of letting all of this in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you today don't have to rush into it, but you can know that's who you're becoming on purpose because that's going to let you pick up on these little opportunities to practice every yeah. single day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I kind of was like, why am I even thinking about this? Like right now, you know, we're several months 
you even maybe a year from like that moment. Um, but like it started looming in, you know, where, cause, cause like a part of me is like, you know, it's all in divine order. Like I, I can see it now. I'm bearing witness to like my own uh, realization of my own dreams. Yeah. And, and then, but then like, <laughs> how can I, and I'll enjoy the moment, but then how can I, how am I even entitled to, to, to more of it? And it makes so much sense that that's coming up right now. Cause you're, you're preparing yourself to not miss out on that moment. Okay. Like you got to know now that's the person you want to become the person who's capable of letting it all in. Okay. And I experiencing like limitless joy being like so that you can forecasting crazy person. Nope. Not crazy. See, when you stop forecasting fear, then you start forecasting. <laughs> You get anxious about it, like you've capped out your joy today. Yeah. I'm going to reel that back in. Yep. But I love that because it's like, no, we're never going to stop humaning. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Interesting. I think about, I do think about this. You do think about like, you know, we're all like manifesting abundance and love and whatever that means to you. But it's like, what do you do when it, when you get it? What's yeah. You know, what's the plan? Yeah, it sounds like a two-part plan. You savor it so that you give yourself that moment in time. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't escape that moment because you don't think that you can handle it. And you know, the next dream is on it around the corner. You're going to get to it. You're going to keep repeating this whole beautiful cycle of, right caring about things and then being afraid you'll lose them and then experiencing all of the the fears and the joys, you're never going to stop. Yeah. But that first part of the plan, it's everything. Yeah. Letting yourself savor it. I got to work on that, man. Great. That sounds like your homework. (laughs) Yeah. Like I have got like daily joy and, um, you know, a lot of the things we talk about where I don't take myself for granted and I try to yeah. love and appreciate myself on a daily basis and be really attuned to just like the everyday abundance that I'm already experiencing. But when you get to a place where you're checking big things off your box, like off your list, you know, that we all have, and they're all different for everyone. But when you get there where you're, you're checking the big ones off, it's a little scary. Yeah. But I swear it's coming up right now because you don't want to cost yourself that moment. You don't want to get to that moment and then have all of the upper limits activated and shut it down. Like you don't deserve this. This isn't as good as it should be. Right. Like that's not what you're there in that moment for. Right. Right. Okay. That's fine. You just start practicing now. Okay. Okay. That's good. I need to stretch that way. I'm stretching it like that way a lot. And I need to stretch that way. Yes. And expand. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with our conversation. Okay. I'm going to ask you three questions. Okay. That I did not prepare you for, but rapid okay. fire. So don't, no pressure to be, to answer perfectly. And then I'm going to ask you to share with everybody, like how to find you and where to buy all the things. On the internet. So my first question is what would you say to somebody who is thinking about coaching? Short answer, do it. If you're thinking about it, that little seed was planted in there somewhere for some reason and just do it. Yeah, do it. End of story. Yeah, have a talk with, a, with whoever the coach is. Get someone you vibe with um, and like really just have a conversation with them and bring some of your scaries and see how they respond to them. And if it makes sense, you know, pursue, but I would say do it, like trust your instincts, trust the little nudges we all get. Mm. And, um, 
nothing bad can come up. There's no, it's a win-win. There's literally nothing bad that can come from it. So you just do it. If you've got that little seed planted, I would go for it. Even if you have no goals in life, you're still going to have to like live and be a human. Yeah. Your sphere is still going to show up. Indecisiveness, uh, cloudiness, depression, anxiety, joy, abundance, all of these things are still going to show up. And I think the best part about like having worked with you and continue to work with you is man, get it, having tools to manage all of that. R- the things that are going to show up rather than like, you know, the five-year plan or whatever that is. Yes. Right. Like yes. it's Thursday, you know, yes. I might, <laughs> like, I might be afraid today <laughs> about something. And so how do I manage that? And for me, it's like, I've gotten really curious about it, but I didn't know I could ask my fear a question yes. a year ago. Like I didn't know I could like talk with my fear. So I think that's also something people should think about. It's like, you still are human and you're going to have like a lot of feelings and they're not going away. That's not the goal. Like this whole stupidness around don't make emotional decisions. All decisions are emotional. Thank you. And the problem is we don't know how to feel like process and, 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 rationalize or whatever you want to say, intellectualize, conceptualize our feelings yeah. or use them or turn them into powerful tools to make decisions from. Decision Masters Program, Tools for Humaning. It's the tagline. I love it. What kind of decision maker would you call yourself today? Hmm. Clear. Hmm grounded, um, tethered in a good Mm. way to something like my, like I have sort of my, you know, tetherball, there's the pole. Like I have that. And, you know, sometimes you're like that ball just whipping around, but if you root it to something, yes, you can sort of, you know, sway the course of your any your life out there somewhere. So I'm like that. Like, I don't think I'm a perfect decision maker or what even what that is, but I think I have just like this root thing that I can keep coming back to that helps me stay rooted and grounded. Yeah. Like your anchor. Yeah. I have an anchor. Stealing that tetherball <laughs> metaphor. So good. <laughs> okay. My final question is what's the most self-honoring decision you've made in the last week that you want to share with us? It could be in the last 24 hours. Thanks for and not really, preparing this is just, me for that. No, it's just an excuse for you to be able to like look, look back and practice savoring. Oh, right. Okay. okay. But it's also, I'm also like, what happened this week? Um, I know. I know. <laughs> like how old are your kids? What's happening in your house? <laughs> what do we do on Monday? Um, I think I'm also, I, I would say back to kidding and parenting is I think, doing great there because you know we're at these ages of eight and five and there's thoughts and opinions but I think I'm doing a really good job at listening but also not taking on more than I can at the time Mm. I mean just Mm. I'm being comfortable with listening to myself in the moment and just being like I don't really want to read that book right now and you can go to bed um I love you yeah I don't yeah. What else am I doing? That's really self-honoring. Um, I think I made some great financial choices this week, really looked at the Delicious. budget and just decided what needed to be purchased and what would, would wait. Mm. Um, we went on vacation last week. That was super self-honoring. Yes. Like, one of the best parts of that vacation was I drank a margarita. And then I passed out um, face down on a lounge chair by the pool living the dream because I needed to. Yeah. Yeah. That's what needed to happen in that moment. Yeah. <sighs> so good. So that's so good. I feel like that was like three terrible things to tell people. 
If you said, if you, if you want me to take it out later, so, <laughs> but I think it's fabulous. And I think that every, like, nobody's going to be mad about a margarita. Okay, great. Um, where can anyone find you? Tell us everything that you want us to know about Carla's fresh market. Okay. <sighs> It's amazing. So I'm the founder and CEO of Carlos Fresh Market, a reimagined neighborhood grocery store. We're going to be opening up our first brick and mortar soon, um, pending the city of LA, probably early 23 now. Um, but right now we are selling elevated pantry staples online at carlosfreshmarket.com. I also have a pop-up pantry where I pop up all over LA, with a curated selection of pantry items, Instagram, Carlos Fresh Market. Great. I have a newsletter. Yep. I read it. I mean, but, and you guys can just call me. Here's, I'm kidding. Don't give out my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll go to Carlos Fresh Market on Instagram, yeah. find out where you're popping up next, and yes. then look for your brick and mortar, which is happening because the movie didn't end. Because the movie didn't no end. To that- that person and that money. No. Like you just decided I'm not going to give up. And then you, you didn't, and then you still haven't. And here we are today. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly how it happened. Yeah. We decided, we already decided back then. And then we just keep, we just hold true to that decision Mm. and things happen. You things happen. We learned all of the lessons. We got everything we needed out of that experience. And then I just didn't know that that wasn't the way it was supposed to go. Exactly. That's you all. encountered that. It was the misunderstanding. I was yeah. like, oh, I thought things were going to go this way. Turns out yeah. that's not how they were going to go. Great. Yeah, they were going to go on. that way. I just didn't know. I had no, I knew nothing about it. So now we're here and we're doing another way. And it's like, it's really great. I'm learning a lot and we're getting closer. I love that that wisdom just got slipped in like right at the end too. Uh, thank you for being here and talking to us and to me about you because you're amazing. I'll come back anytime. Please, because I feel like we only scratch the surface. Next time we should like eat together and do it. Okay. Yeah. With wine or margaritas. Either. Yeah. It's still summertime. It's amazing. You can always have a margarita. I love it. It's like our national drink. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting. And we're going to, we'll see you at the market. We'll see you at the market. Oh, that was a good tagline. (laughs) Bye. Hey, did you love this episode? Well, guess what? The Decision Masters program is enrolling right now. If you're ready to trust every decision you make and stop living in overthinking agony, you will want to check this out. Get all the details at kirstenparker.com forward slash DMP. That's kirstenparker.com forward slash DMP. I will see you in the Decision Masters program.